from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Melba Crane, Mr. Dollar. Oh, yes, Miss Crane. I phoned a little while ago, and your maid said you were out. She told me. Was there something you... You've had a $20,000 pearl necklace stolen. I thought you might want to talk about it. I have talked about it. The local police were quite thorough, Mr. Dollar. Well, let's say there have been some new developments. Like what? That's what I want to see you about. I suppose you want to come out here. Oh, thank you. Will a half hour from now be convenient? Couldn't we talk about this over the phone? If 45 minutes will be better for you, I'll be glad to cooperate. You seem to be a very persistent man. I usually get what I go after. Know something, Mr. Dollar? What? So do I. Oh, then this might turn out to be interesting. See you in a half hour. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Cranesburg, Ohio, to the Home Office Tri-State Guarantee Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Cranesburg matter. Expense account continued. (laughs) Item, $20,000. The face value of the policy on a pearl necklace stolen one week ago from Miss Melba Crane. Young socialite, one of the last two surviving members of the town's most aristocratic family. And, according to her own statement, a girl who always got what she went after. Well, I'd almost got what I'd gone after. I'd at least made contact with Smiley Prell, the jewel thief who'd phoned Hartford and offered a deal. But that was all. Smiley had clammed up, started to stall, and implied the whole thing was blowing up in his face. And now the victim herself was trying to stall. And on top of everything else, a storm was coming up. I left my hired car near the coach house and walked down a long arbor toward the entrance to the Crane Mansion. It had been quite an estate once, still was. But the buildings needed a touch of paint here and there. And the gardens needed a gardener. Just a hint of wear and tear. It fit with what I'd learned at the bank. Though still tops in local society, Melba Crane and her Uncle Phineas were flat broke. I was reaching to ring the doorbell when I saw the couple in the sunroom, a man in a business suit and a girl in a maid's uniform, so busy with each other they didn't even notice me at first. It was an intensely romantic scene, and I started to feel like a peeping Tom. The girl was still a little red-faced when she answered the door a few seconds later. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, My name is Johnny Dollar. I'd like to see Miss... Dollar, you're the investigator about the robbery. Lauder must have wired everybody in town. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I, I didn't mean to blurt it out that Oh, way. I found it interesting. You know we're going to get a little wet if that rain starts? Oh, uh, won't you come in, Mr. Dollar? Thanks. You'll uh, want to see Miss Crane, I imagine. Yes, I think she's expecting me. If you'll wait here, please. Oh, by the way, I, uh, I didn't interrupt you, I hope. Interrupt? I, I'll tell her you're here, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. See you later. Oh, hello. You must be the insurance fellow. Did you get a wire, too? A wire? Oh, no. Melba told me you were coming out. I'm a friend of the family, Mr. Dollar, Dean Sellers. How are you, Mr. Sellers? Melba and I are engaged, you know. Congratulations. Oh, it's not recent. Yeah, I know. Say, you're a little hard to figure out. I'm a complete enigma, Mr. Sellers. I believe you're the chap who gave Miss Crane the necklace, right? Yes, it was an engagement present. Do you uh, have any lead on it yet? Nothing definite. I understood you'd been contacted by the thief who stole it. That's right. Well, then you... Well, I haven't actually seen the necklace yet, and until I do, I can't be positive this man ever, well, even has it. It wouldn't be the first time a professional jewel thief has tried to pull a swindle. I see. Uh, Tell me something, Mr. Dollar. Yeah? Suppose you do get hold of the pearls. What happens to them then? Well, that depends. If Miss Crane's claim hasn't been paid at the time, they go to her. If it has been paid and she refuses to reopen negotiations, then we sell the necklace to recover our losses. And up till now, as I understand it, the claim hasn't been paid. That's right. I see. Well, I... 
Hope you get it back quick, then. The insurance won't cover the sentimental value. Sentimental value to whom, Mr. Sowers? <laughs> to both of us. Oh, I know. I, uh... I saw you outside the sunroom there. Strictly unintentional. Uh, what I mean is his appearances can be deceiving sometimes. I I wouldn't want you to misunderstand. Oh, I think I understand perfectly, Mr. Sellers. Good. Whether Miss Crane would or not may be something else again. Though. Oh, Melba is very understanding. She must be. Well, I've got to run on. She'll be down in a minute. Uh, my office is in the Ridley building. Drop in if there's any way I can help. Thanks. I may just do that. Hello? I'm sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Dollar. Oh, that's all right. It, it gave me a chance to meet your fiancé. Oh, were you talking with Dean? We exchanged a few pleasantries. Isn't he a darling? Well... Of course, he's a little headstrong sometimes, and impulsive. But he, but never, he never means any harm by it. How did you know? Oh, personal observation. And also, by an odd coincidence, that's exactly the way you were described to me. Oh, instead of beautiful, glamorous, seductive. I imagine it was assumed that I could see those qualities for myself. Mm. I wonder if I should buy that as it is or analyze it first. I warn you, I'm dangerously subtle. I think you may be at that. Would you like a drink, or are you one of those always stick to business types? I'm even worse. I combine the two. I'll have scotch on the rocks. Well, that's my drink. Well, now we found something in common. We already had something the robbery. Yeah, you want to talk about it? Why not? I want that necklace recovered as much as you do. Yes, I understand it has a high sentimental value. Who told you that? Your fiancé. Oh. Here's your drink. Thanks. To pearls, the frozen tears from the eyes of Allah. A poetic cop. <laughs> More cynical than poetic. The man I heard call them that had just knifed a British colonial administrator and blown up a sampan with six Chinese fishermen aboard. Why? Nine pearls. He wanted them. There were 38 in that necklace of yours. This man, did he get away with it? Uh, not exactly. He was shot to death on the Hong Kong waterfront. Well, this is good scotch. It is? Another thing, Miss Crane, I am not a cop, poetic or otherwise. It amounts to the same thing, doesn't it? Well, in some ways. I'm not professionally concerned with identifying and capturing criminals and bringing them to justice... My obligations on that score are no more nor less than those of any other private citizen. So? So I'm hired by the insurance company to protect their interests. Usually that involves trying to recover stolen property or looking for evidence of insurance fraud. I'm afraid I don't quite... Sometimes I make deals, Miss Crane. Meaning exactly what? Meaning that if somebody should start something and get in over their head, I... I might listen to reason, try to work something out. A cop wouldn't. He's not permitted to. Well, that would all be very interesting, I'm sure, to the person who stole the necklace. Yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? What about that person, Mr. Dollar, the jewel thief who phoned the insurance company? Smiley Prowl. I talked to him a couple of hours ago, briefly. Does he have the pearls? I don't know. Uh, do you mind if I have another drink? Go ahead. Thanks. What do you mean, you don't know? That's why you came here, wasn't it? To meet him and get them back? He may not have them. He may just be trying to swindle the insurance company. That's not too uncommon a game, you know. No, I wouldn't know. Oh, yeah. It's tried every now and then. The nicest people sometimes. Just looking at you. you know, it seems to me you're taking this whole thing pretty calmly. <sighs> well, that's merely a front. Inside, I'm a seething volcano. Now, look... Hey, tell me something. Why did you postpone your wedding? I didn't. Dean was the one who... Now, what difference does it make? What's that got to do with it? Do you think he's changed his mind about marrying you? Suppose we leave Mr. Sellers out of it. Can't. He's already in it. He's the one who gave you the necklace in the first place, an engagement gift. Has he called off the engagement, Miss Crane? He hasn't, and he won't regardless of any rumors you may hear to the contrary. Now, does that answer your question? Mm, more or less. Then suppose we leave my personal life alone and talk about the robbery. That is, if you're at all interested in it. Where is the safe, Miss Green? Safe? Oh, that the necklace was in. It's there behind that painting. Do you want to see it? If you don't mind. All right. 
You and your uncle live here alone, as I understand it. My maid, of course, Betty. Well, there's the safe. I doubt if you'll find any fingerprints or anything. The police spent hours on it. Mm Mm-hmm. That's a real old-fashioned one. Our family's been around quite a while, Mr. Dollar. Wouldn't be much of a job for a professional safecracker. You mean even without the combination? Even without. How did the thief get into the house? Force a window somewhere, a door? No, with a key, I guess. Oh? You see, it happened in the afternoon. I'd gone out, and Uncle Phineas was out somewhere, as usual. The house was empty at the time. What about your maid? Betty? Well, after I left, she decided to go into town to do some shopping or something. Oh, they couldn't possibly have picked a better time. Apparently not. Would you like to look around the house? No, no thanks. I've got a pretty complete story from the police reports. Mostly I came out here to take a look at you. And what's your verdict? Maybe I'll do better with Smiley Prell. I'm meeting him later. Oh? And is he going to produce the necklace? I don't know. He talked about a double cross. Said he might give me more than I was bargaining for. He was pretty upset. Why? I don't know. Incidentally, Mr. Dollar, there's someone else you'll no doubt be talking to, and I want to warn you about him. Who's that? Uncle Phineas. Of course he means all right, Is he headstrong and impulsive, too? He makes up things sometimes, and he's, well, just a little bit vague. Balmy, you mean? Mr. Dollar, with people of our class, it's referred to as eccentric. I'm sure you understand. I left the house filled with understanding and with some brand new questions about the cranes that needed still more understanding. The lowering storm clouds had brought an early dusk and it was nearly dark when I reached to open the door of my car. Then suddenly I caught a flash of white at the corner of the coach house. Somebody had seen me and tried to duck out of sight. I walked quickly across the driveway and moved quietly up to the corner of the building. How are you, Betty? Mr. Dollar. Can I help you with that? Uh, No. I mean, I, I I was just going to burn some trash. Well, let me put it in the incinerator for you. Here. No, please. Sure you sorted these papers? There seems to be something heavy here. Betty? Uh, let me have it, please. You won't understand. Why, Miss Crane thought I was very understanding. Betty! Uh, you'd better run on. She sounds impatient. I'll, I'll take care of this. For you. No, please. You'll only... Oh! I watched her disappear into the shadows, running toward the house. Then I unwrapped the package she'd been trying to hide in the incinerator it was a 32 caliber revolver, and one chamber had been fired recently. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a strange disappearance, a grim cry in the night. And a quarry is run to earth in room 313. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking.